Now we'll be solving a problem on Rankine with reheat. We will keep the problem we have to solve is the following. We have high pressure steam enters the turbine at 2 megapascal and 400 degrees C. It's reheated now at a pressure of 500 kilopascal. So this is a pressure where at which the reheat is occurring. Now we are reheating this to 400 degrees C, so it's exactly the same maximum temperature. And then after this, it's expanded to 10 kilopascal. What we have to do, we have to determine the cycle efficiency. Here is the sketch of our problem, okay? We have from state one to state two, the pump. Then two to three, we have our boiler follow three to four high pressure turbine then we have the reheat from four to five and five to six we have the low pressure turbine and run from six to one we have our condenser what we are looking for here we are looking for what is the thermal efficiency so computation of the thermal efficiency of its simple Rankine with reheat. So we know that we will need different enthalpies, so I will write them here so directly. So let's start with the H1. H1, basically we will rapidly neglect the work of the pump compared to the work of the turbines here. You see this difference is really exaggerated. If you plot a real TS diagram, so you will see that the difference is pretty small, okay? So it's quite realistic. And here we can directly predict this, knowing that the work is equal for a pump minus integral of VDP. Since we are reaching two megapascal, so the work will be minus two kilojoules per kilogram. So it will be probably very small compared to the work we are expecting to get through the turbine. So we neglect the work of the pump compared to the work of the turbine. The consequence is that H1 and H2 will be the same. So 0.1 and 2 will be the same. And H1, it will be equal to H2, will be H at which conditions? at x1 is equal to 0 and p1 is equal to 10 kilopascal and this will give us an enthalpy of kilojoules per kilograms. This is done. Now let's move on to H3. H3, this is the maximal temperature and pressure. So this is H at uh, a temperature 400 degrees C and a pressure of 2 megapascal. Superheated vapor and this will give us 3,213.6 kilojoules per kilograms of water. Next one on the list, H4. H4 is equal to what? Is equal to H under which conditions? We know the pressure, 500 kilopascal. And we know also that it's isentropic. S4 is equal to S3. This will give us a value for H4, 2,685.7 kilojoules per kilograms. Then we have H5 is equal to what? H5, we know it's the same temperature as H3 and we know the new pressure. So it's H under the following conditions. 
500 kilopascal and 400 degrees C and this will give us 3273.4 kilojoules per kilograms and the last one this is H6 we know the pressure 10 kilopascal and we know that is isentropic process so H6 is equal to H at 10 kilopascal and S6 is equal to S5 and this will give us 2504.4 kilojoules per kilograms something extremely important to see here when we write the enthalpies, you remember this is something we try to track, is the quality at the exit here, okay? Here, with the values that we have, this is a sketch, so we don't know if 0.4 will be in a mixture phase or will be superheated vapor. We have to get it from here. But we know that for state six here, we can get the quality, and interestingly enough, the quality is equal to 09664 which is interesting so for different things first the quality here that we are getting is higher than the quality we managed to get when we increased the maximal temperature and second thing is that the quality is quite high which is good news for us so now if we calculate the thermal efficiency and we increase the thermal efficiency while keeping uh, the quality high and limiting the maximal temperature. So, which is quite a good deal, right? So, let's move on and try now to calculate this thermal efficiency. So, what do we know? We showed that the thermal efficiency for this cycle can be written as H3 minus H4 high pressure turbine plus H5 minus H6 low pressure turbine we neglected the work of the pump so therefore we don't have even to write it because H1 is equal to H2 for us and the QN H3 minus H2 this is QN in the boiler plus the contribution in the reheat H5 minus H4 okay here I'll we'll put a note that the work of the pump is neglected compared to the work of the turbine so therefore H1 is equal to H2 for us so basically we have all the enthalpies. The game here is to calculate now QN and the work of the turbine. We divide them and we get our thermal efficiency, right? So computation of the work of the turbine. So we know that the work of the turbine is equal to H3 minus H4 plus H5 minus H6 okay we have all the enthalpies and this will give us 1296.4 kilojoules per kilograms First good news, this is higher than the work of the turbine we managed to get with a simple Rankine cycle, okay? So meaning that we increased the work net, which is good. But to get this work net increased, we also increased QN because of the reheat. So we have to calculate this computation of QN 
What's important for us is the ratio, if we are interested in the thermal efficiency, okay? You might be interested also in the work net, okay? Do you maximize work net regardless of the thermal efficiency? This is not really efficient approach. In ideal world, you increase your thermal efficiency. At the same time, you increase your work net. So QN is equal to H3 minus H2 plus the reheat H5 minus H4. And this will give us 3,609.5 kilojoules per kilograms. Let's check now the ratio. So, the final result, thermal efficiency is equal to the work of the turbine over Qn, and this will give us 1,296.4 over 3,609.5, and this will give us a value of 0 0.358, or our thermal efficiency is equal to 35.8%. So, now it's important to compare it with the simple Rankin cycle working under the same condition and then to calculate what's the overall increase. So, this represents an increase of 10.8%, this is a relative increase, in the thermal efficiency compared to simple Rankin without reheat okay so let's try to recap here what we did is that we kept the same maximal temperature we kept the same pressure in the boiler we kept the same lowest pressure in the condenser the only thing that we did we split the turbine into two and then we had reheat in between so, this led to an increase in the work net, which is good news. An increase in the thermal efficiency, which is excellent. But more than this, the quality remains very high. So, this means that this is quite an interesting solution, right? Where all our terms are increasing, okay? And... Mostly, the thermal efficiency is increasing and the quality remains high. So, this is why you can imagine that in real life applications, you always have reheat when you are using a steam power cycle.